Hello everyone, Pally Tom here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we have landed upon Leoric. This skin is a funny skin because to my knowledge, this is one of the very few community-driven ideas that was fully fleshed out in the game. Janitor Leoric was made by some guy, posted on Reddit, and the community loved it. And it took a few years, but Blizzard inevitably added it into the game. Really, really nice setup. Leoric was added into the game around the same time as Johanna. They were the kings and queens of Lane Clear. We talk about this a lot, but Johanna and Leoric were so good at clearing objectives that they had to make a new classification for enemies known as monsters. A monster is any objective minion or boss or anything objective related that you have to fight. Right now, Leoric has a 52.12% win rate with a popularity of 17% and only a 2.5% ban rate. So a lot of people are able to pick him up and play him. He has a very unique skill set where he's able to die and then still maneuver around the map and be useful. You're going to see a lot of that in today's video. And I talk about it in the video as well, but he also has a really unique auto attack that's super duper fun. If he attacks, he swings in a wide range, swings in a wide range, and then pummels an enemy for crit damage. I kind of wish they added that mechanic onto more heroes in the game. I think it's really interesting. It makes you pay attention to what you're doing a little bit more. But my god, his lane clear is so good. There is no denying it at all. As far as talent diversity, a lot of people are picking up the same stuff. Early game might diverge a little bit, but Spectral Leech into Mithril Mace is almost picked in every single game. Spectral Leech and Mithril Mace actually being played in 58% of Leoric games. That's very, very high. Same thing with Entomb. Entomb is looking at a 78% pick rate. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I believe I mentioned this in the video, but I was not feeling very well today at all. Ended up not being able to sleep because this headache was just bothering me. And well, I was just laying in bed with a headache. I thought I might as well get up and do something fun. Played a few pra practice games for Leoric. They all went okay, but I decided this one was going to be recorded no matter the outcome. We just pressed play and, and went with it because hopefully I can go to bed soon. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate you. I got confused over a tooltip a little bit. Please forgive me. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Towers of Doom today. The friendly team Leoric, Lieutenant Mama Morales, Varian, Rin, Greymane, and Maya. The enemy team White Mane, Lee Ming, Varian, Falstad, and Cassia. At level one, we're going to go for Ocean Renewal. Activate to heal Leoric for 30% of his maximum health over 5 seconds. Regeneration Globes lower the cooldown of this ability by 20 seconds, and by default it has a 120 second cooldown. So Region Globes are going to be an important part of our playstyle throughout the course of the entire game, even though we don't have a quest that's stacking them. Our Creepy Hand has a really big tooltip, and I was hoping I had more time to read it. Grab an enemy hero's soul, dealing up to 20% of their maximum health as damage, and healing Leoric for up to 20% of his maximum health while they're nearby. Leoric's movement speed is reduced by 20% while this is active. Ooh, FPS lag. Hello, what year is it? Uh, there is another talent that I think has a really bad tooltip that I was hoping would help shed. I was hoping that tooltip would help shed some light on the other tooltip, but uh, we'll just have to figure that out when we get there. Moving and trying to body block specifically so we can kill Varian because Leoric has his ghostly trait, which allows him to come back into play really, really quickly. So generally speaking, yes, your deaths do give just as much XP as anyone else's, and you shouldn't just walk in and die. But if someone has to die in a team fight, it should be you if at all possible. You have significantly lower death timers than anyone else in the game other than probably Murky, and you can still provide damage and slows for your team while you are in your ghost state. So our Q ability is the Skeletal Swing. This does extra damage to minions, swings at a big area in front of you, and just cleaves them down. Speaking of cleaving, Leoric has a really unique auto attack. 
His auto attack is a sequence of two sweeping attacks into one, like, focused swing, like a like an overhead swing on an enemy. That overhead swing deals critical damage while everything else just hits a wider area. So you actually have phenomenal lane clear on Leoric in any situation. Even if you're out of mana, just keep swinging. It'll be okay. Just keep swinging. We're going to use Ocean Renewal here just to give ourselves a little more HP. There's some region globes in our general vicinity as well, so it doesn't feel too bad to do it, even though our Mama Morales is right there with us. I'm trying to do my best to double soak these lanes as best as I can. We're a little bit slow. We kind of stayed uh, up in the top lane one wave too long there, I think. But we just walk right in, start cleaving it down. Falstad wants to trade into me. We hit him with the creepy hand, and that's going to have him back up. Our E ability is the Skeletal Walk, This, or actually the Wraith Walk. This allows us to separate our soul and our body from each other. Our body stays dormant on the ground. Meanwhile, our soul traverses forward, and we cannot be CC'd while this is happening. So even in situations where stuff looks really sketchy for Leoric, all he has to do is focus on his Wraith Walk for a quick second, and that would allow him to get to safety. The objective's coming up really, really soon, but I'm actually going to push one more wave of this down. Uh, looks like Mayev just gave up on bottom, so we might want to focus on getting top. Uh, so rather than focusing on uh, that wave, I'm going to start rotating up. White main just above us is going to be my main target if she comes back into this altercation. The enemy team's variant is a taunt variant. We are sucking a lot of life out of them, but unfortunately we are taunted ourselves now. We are taken down, but we immediately start to siphon the life of Cassia trying to get back into this game. We're also going to be slowing her down as well as she approaches our death ball of a squad. She's not going to make it too far. Now the creepy hand is on Li Ming, healing us back up rapidly. She's diving in to try to stop an early objective, but that XP gets us up to level seven. We're going to go for drain momentum at level seven. This allows us to get a movement speed increase whenever we have the creepy hand attached to an adversary. Just allows us to totally move around team fights without issue at all. Uh, I believe this is my fourth game with Leoric. Last game I was playing on Dragonshire and I got used to all of these movement speed increases that I can do. And every time I actually hopped into the dragon, I felt as slow as molasses, dude. It really can't be understated how much freedom of movement you get on Leoric. The enemy team's Varian was checking out this Merc camp, decided against it. That was definitely the right call, my dude. I'm gonna walk up and just clear his lane in front of him instantaneously. The reason I was hoping for some more clarification with one of our tooltips was because of Neil Peasants. Skeletal Swing deals 75% additional damage. I understand that part. That makes perfect sense. Well, uh, hitting them activates Skeletal Swing's costs and cooldown refund. So I think I have to auto attack an enemy first and then hit them with the Skeletal Swing to then have half of the cooldown taken away. Um, I don't know if this is just me with my tired brain, uh, but that doesn't seem super fucking clear to me. And uh, I wish that could be cleaned up just a little bit. Uh, the enemy team's Li Ming did catch wind of me taking that mercenary camp, but there's nothing she can do about it. We're going to rotate middle one more time to just clear this wave, like I said, almost instantaneously. It's super duper good. If we could just get this wave out of here, we'll be looking really close to level 10. I don't think we'll quite hit it. Uh, two members of the friendly team are not down there. Only one member of the enemy are not down there. So we are a little late to the party. Li Ming going for the channel right now. I'm just trying to walk in and interrupt it, which we do. Cassia looking at me. I'm actually thinking about going for March of the Black King here because our team's grouping up so much. I think the enemy team's going to group up a lot as well, uh, especially with the Taunt Varian. They might be rallying right behind him. And in situations like this, I can just use March of the Black King to plow right through everything. Movement completely unimpeded. And any damage that we do with that ability is going to be healing us up as well. Unfortunately, that wasn't the most effective march I've ever seen. Great interrupt from our Mama Morales on the objective. I've actually almost reformed here because I was siphoning the life out of Li Ming. I have reformed behind the enemy team now. Um, I'm gonna hit her with the swing. 
Oh, just missed with the creepy hand, unfortunately. Maya going in with a great pull on the enemy team there as well. And one more swing and I got her. Boom. We are now siphoning life from the enemy team's false dead. I'm continuing to chase after him to keep that link going. Slowing the enemy teams. Who was that? Was that Cassia or White Man? I don't even know. They all, they're all slender ladies. I can't tell, bro. I can't fucking tell. But the point being, yes, I did die in that fight. Yes, that is my fourth death. But my deaths have consistently been enabling my team to have more vision of a situation that's going on. Or I was at the brunt taking the most punishment and they were able to keep on pushing in without a care in the world. <laughs> it just hit me that I read the wrong tooltip earlier. Bro, it's been a long day, let me tell you. It's been a long day. All weekend, we've been dealing with Holly's computer problems, trying to get her windows installed to work again. And unfortunately, we were completely unsuccessful. What I wanted to read was this one. If an enemy is hero is hit, refund 50% of the cooldown and the mana cost. So I'm just an idiot. Don't mind me. It was right here in front of me. I hovered over the wrong ability. I take my criticism back. I retract my criticism. I love to see mom vans. And we have a mom van directing us right up to the boss on the map. We saw Falstand momentarily. He does have Mighty Gust for this exact situation. Our friendly team's doing a great job of keeping him at bay for the time being. At level 13, we're picking up Spectral Leech. This is going to allow me to siphon life from our enemies whenever I auto attack them. Um, we're gonna use our Creepy Walk right now. That was beautiful. To immune the knockback. And then all we have to do is stay on this objective. We're going to march of the Black King directly into Falstad, hit him with the creepy hand as well. Hit him with the skeletal sweep and force those guys out of there, securing the objective for the friendly team. However, this fight is not over and I went the long way around. Luckily, that didn't matter too much. Li Ming for the enemy team is grabbing that objective and I don't think we're gonna be able to stop her. So instead of rotating down, I'm just gonna focus on my clear in the middle lane. Ballstand's doing a really good job of making sure that he's saving his barrel roll for when the creepy hand is attached to him, trying to get out of that range as fast as possible. That is the right thing to do. Um, my accuracy has been pretty okay, actually. I'm pretty happy with it. Ballstad over the wall. We also see Varian engaging as well. Will Greymane be able to get away? He should be able to. One tip I can give you guys if you're trying to get more consistent with landing the creepy hand is just to land that skeletal swing first. We're going to march the Black King through these guys trying to heal up as much as possible. Creepy hand on Falstad into a skeletal swing, into an Ocean renewal, into a casual walk away. Look at that self-healing. Isn't that fucking nuts? That was a 1v3 and we just casually cruised through it. I love this talent build. It is so much fun. We are seeing Maya bouncing around the lightning ball in the middle lane. Her ult pushing all these guys together. I like the sounds of that. We are connected to Cassie at the moment with the creepy hand doing some pretty good damage. Skeletal swing on every member of the enemy team. Will it be? Oh my God, the knockback. Okay, I wasn't ready for that. March of the Black King does have a very short 50 second cooldown, but it was still on cooldown from the last engagement. Falstad wanted some revenge. Our Varian desperately trying to get away and unbelievably he does. We are connected to Cassia again, slowly but surely returning ourselves back to the land of the living. We will be up for this next objective if everything goes well. If everything goes well. Uh, I'm just gonna keep an eye on Li Ming. She's been really channel happy on these objectives. False ad rotating over to me. We do have everyone alive, so this should be fine. We're gonna pick up Mithril Mace as well. I'll talk about that more in just a moment. Uh, Varian moved over to his side, Leeming still looking at me. No idea where Falstad is currently. Uh, I'm gonna ping for some assistance. Our team's death balling in the middle of mid lane for no reason, and um, I'm not gonna be able to take this if they don't help. So, um, 
looks like they are on the way now. And Li Ming's really far forward. Between Maiev and Varian, they should be able to just delete her. We do get the channel, no problem. The enemy team pushing back in, this time outnumbered though. Will we be able to make anything happen? Do we even need to make anything happen? Honestly, is a pretty good question to ask. These region globes give me my Ocean Renewal. I'm gonna pop it right away. Big minion wave up in the top lane. That's a lot of juicy XP. We wanna make sure that we secure that. Also, with our level 13 and level 16 talents, we have a really nice flow into an auto attack style build. Spectral Leech allows us to deal bonus damage equal to 2.5% of our enemy's health bar every time we auto attack them. And then we also get healed for 5% of that back. We get healed for double. Meanwhile, at level 16, this Mithril Mace, every time we kill a minion, we get 0.3 increasing attack speed. If we kill a hero, 3% increasing attack speed. That caps out at 30%, but 30% extra attack speed is insane. And it actually gives us so much clear. It's, it's Le Leoric might have the best lane clear in the game. Like that, that just might be what's happening. He doesn't even have to do anything special. He just needs mana. He does, I mean, he doesn't even need mana is what I meant to say, excuse me. Very tired, just, just ignore me. Just keep going with it. Uh, there was a great push down to the bottom lane to secure a building prior to the objective getting started. I want to try to pressure this Merc camp if we can. Uh, this looks like a fucking awesome March of the Black King, but actually not connecting with as much as I was hoping. We are gonna hit the skeletal swing, attach the creepy hand onto white mane in the back. She's not healing anyone on the front line. And I'm going to try my best to get away back to safety, back to this building to try to live the time is now. Oh, through that engagement. I was so deep on the back line, there was not a lot of hope of saving me. And I do see this fight going on, but I think it's more important for me to zoom up to this objective as fast as I can. Maev is zoning for me. Greymane took that top right objective. And remember, we're getting five per shot here. The enemy team now only has four remaining and boss is open. Boss is up and ready to go. And it is 1 million percent the right play. With the damage of Greymane, we should be able to plow right through that, no problem. I'm trying to make it look like nothing's going on, being in lane, just clearing it, but obviously we're gonna rotate in and help out in any way that we can. This boss does have a cleaving auto attack, be very mindful of that, and Falstad knows. <laughs> but he can't stop it. Creepy walked onto the point just at the last moment anyway, but that's gonna be four projectiles hitting the enemy team's base and ending the game. Again, sorry for the confusion over uh, the tooltip. Sorry for all the misspeaking. I've had such a bad headache today and I could not sleep to save my life. So I decided to get up and at least be a little productive. And hey, we got, I, I hit record. I told myself, I'm not gonna cherry pick games. I'm just gonna hit record. And this was the game that happened. And it was a pretty good one. Yes, we did die a lot on the front line as Leoric, but I've accepted that death is part of playing the character. And we have so much healing that sometimes we can get away with way more than you would expect. We do have six deaths, but we managed to do 78,000 siege, 36,000 hero damage. We self-healed for 28,000. Varian actually keeping up with me. That's super surprising to me. And soaked a very respectable 13,000 XP. We went for Ocean Renewal at level one into Neil Peasants at level four. Drain Momentum at seven. March of the Black King at 10. Spectral Leech at 13. And then Mithril Mace at level 16. At 20, I would have likely gone for the Burning Despair. I really like a lot. But Death March is so easy. You just heal for so much. It's ridiculous. I will say that the most popular choice at 10 is in two. Most people go for this. You create a wall around an enemy and hopefully burst them down. And then on top of that, most people get the Buried Alive talent at level 20. This is going to lower the duration of Entomb, but anyone inside is silenced and they take damage over time. I find in a lot of my games, most people don't give a shit about Entomb. That's been the case all night. That's why I wanted to do something else in this game. 
Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. We are going to be taking a look at Lily very soon in our future. And I think she got some changes recently that I'm not familiar with. So that'll be cool to take a look at. Take care. See you guys again soon. Goodbye.